Hello and welcome, I'm Lyndon Walker and I hope you enjoy the video. Now here's my initial sketch. I don't have footage for this as I often do much of my sketching on the go, but staying busy is important. As you can see here, I start out by blocking in big shapes. I try not to get into detailing too early, else I risk getting stuck in one spot and overworking the painting. Something I really want to avoid in this very architecture-focused piece. As for my color choices, I decide I wanted to work on a more atmospheric lighting, so I cast the foreground in red, as red is the first wavelength of light to disappear, followed by yellow, and lastly by blue. However, I wanted to keep the focus on the floating statue, and with red being the most powerful and attention-grabbing color, I chose to render this painting as looking from shadow into light, thus muting the red and pushing the bright figure to prominence. As I begin to render all the different structures, I try to be conscientious of the amount of contrast I use, as contrast will often always draw the attention of the viewer, and like I said, I don't want to draw that focus away from the statue. Now, that noise you hear is the sound of my notebook, as I have something I like to refer to as forgetting every single thought I've ever had. So. I took the liberty of noting down what I wanted to say so I didn't forget what I wanted to talk to you about. So, back to what we were saying. If you're someone who is familiar with my work, you may notice that I tend to draw mostly live subjects. Now, what I mean by live subjects is people, animals, birds, chickens. Specifically chickens. I really like chickens. They are my favorite animal. They are round and soft, and I guess that's the main characteristics I look for in just about anything. However, they're also very smart. Albeit, there are a good number of them that also have nothing but elevator music playing in their heads all the time, but I only love them the more for it. Good for them. I wish that were me. I think... Based off of those characteristics and guidelines, my favorite chicken would probably have to be something like a Cochin or a Brahme. If you look at them, you can look up pictures of them. They're very heavily plumed birds. They're very thick, for lack of a better word. They're very puffy, and I love them. I also really like silkies. They're like walking cotton balls. However, they're kind of like the pugs of chickens, we definitely should not make more of them, but I will love and cherish the ones that we do have. I also really like Sibrites. I'm not really sure if I'm saying the name correctly, I always feel like I pronounce it wrong, but we're deviating a little bit from the round and soft rule. Not to say they aren't round and soft, they are by nature still chickens and therefore round and soft. but. They're much more lightly feathered birds, and what I really like about them is actually their feathers. They have what's called a laced patterning, so what this is, is say you took one of their feathers after asking first, is there their feathers, but take one of their feathers and look at the outer edge of the feather. The whole outer edge will be black, while the inner portion of the feather is another color, say white or this orangey copper color. These are generally referred to as silver and gold, as I recall. But I think, I think I'm getting a little bit on a tangent here, but that was the obligatory chicken tangent of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did because I just really like talking about chickens. And if you ever want to talk about chickens, just shoot me a message. Back to what I was saying though. Although you could definitely say that this painting I'm working on now is still figure-based due to the form of the statue, I've been really enjoying shifting my focus to the scenery of a piece, whether it be man-made or naturally occurring. I feel like having a solid world to place someone in, in really solidifies a piece. I really enjoy storytelling through this, predominantly through comics actually. Right now, I'm working on some long-form comics, and in doing so, I've learned a lot from that. One, and probably the most important thing, 
that I've learned is to enjoy what you're doing. And part of doing that for me was diversifying what I was drawing, whether it be the characters, the backgrounds, the angles, perspectives, so on and so forth, all while maintaining a coherent storylining. But I think I've gotten a little off topic a bit again. Oopsies. Anyway, what I enjoyed about this painting was drawing off the fantastical castle-like structures. I wanted to make something that challenged reality, but could still conceptually exist. What I mean by this is I was trying to toe the line of believability. So, this subject does not exist in real life, but it is structured and meticulously built in a fashion that you don't necessarily question its existence in this context. However, I suppose now that I've mentioned it, you are going to question it, but I guess that's just my fault. Oh well, enjoy that. When first coming up with the idea for this painting, I was thinking about video game level creation, actually. Something that I could drop a little fellow into and they could run around to their heart's content. Thinking of your work as a habitable place is both exciting and kind of calming for me, though I suppose it depends on what you're drawing. Usually when I sit down to draw, I try to set up my space so I don't have to move around every five seconds because I forgot something. And this usually entails whether I'm working traditionally or digitally, digitally in this case, clearing off my desk, using the bathroom, doing my stretches. Be sure you always stretch, and periodically, or you will hurt a lot. That was a PSA for everyone whose back hurts right now. Get up and stretch right now. But I do that, get a cup of tea, either something that I have in the house, or I might take a quick little walk down the street and get a Thai tea, or maybe a smoothie, or a matcha. I actually have a cup of tea with me right now. It's something that I had in the cupboard. It's peach, ginger, and matcha, which I personally really like. It's a fruity tea, probably because of the peach. That's generally how things work. It smells nice and fruity. But, yeah, it's very nice. I like it a lot. Anyway, sit down. And I usually like to put on some music in the background to help me work. Now, I know some people might find, like, background noise to be distracting. I personally like music playing. If it's a TV show or a movie, I will probably get distracted. But music, I think, is very calming. I remember during this piece, I was listening to a couple albums by Trivium, some Papa Roach, Young Guns, Three Days Grace, and to some of you who may know who some of those bands are, that doesn't sound very relaxing, but I guess that's just my personal taste in music. It's something that I like, that I think is calming, and not necessarily distracting to me. Or I get in the zone, and I'm just jamming while I'm painting, and it's a good time. Now, usually this whole process from, like, sketch to finish... I would say this one probably took about maybe eight hours, or within eight hours. That's usually how long it takes for my larger paintings. I don't usually like to, like, s sit on a painting, if that makes sense. I want to get it done, have it completed, move on to the next one, and take what I've learned from the painting I just did and apply it to the next one. But that's just me, I suppose. I also tend to work rather fast, if I do say so myself. But that's just me again. That's just what I like to do. Now, as we go on here, we can see now that I'm getting into more of the details of the painting here, which I think can be rather fun. However, I, like I said earlier on the video, I try not to get too lost in detailing as it can end up overworking the painting, and that's not fun either, because then you need to go in and rework the painting so it isn't as overworked, and then you're still overworking it, and it turns into a hellish paradox. Alright, so at this point in the painting, we're mostly just going through 
crossing our I's, dotting our T's. I know exactly what I said. I did not stutter. And we're just making sure everything looks crisp and clean and putting in whatever details we haven't gotten to yet. Now, it's at this point that I realize we're actually getting towards the actual end of the video, and I just want to say, when I ultimately decide to make this video in the first place, I really wanted to try a longer form time lapse. I had done shorter time lapses before, I had done voice acting before, but I had never done anything quite to this degree. I tried to make it semi-educational in hopes of, like, maybe helping out someone in the process, sharing whatever tips and tricks I might have come along in my years of making artwork. So if you learned anything, that's great. I'm happy. If you didn't learn anything, well, you're smarter than me, and that's also great. I'm glad you stuck around to listen to me talk about chickens and music and tea. Oh my. It took me a long time, actually, to sit down and record this, because I was, to a degree, very nervous about listening to my own voice. For a couple reasons, but presenting it to other people to listen to, I suppose, is very a very normal thing to be nervous about. To talk, to draw, or to perform in front of an audience of one, 100, or just yourself, even, is very nerve-wracking, but in the end, I really enjoyed painting and speaking with you, and perhaps I'll see you around another time. I want to say thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the future. Bye-bye.